get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the same like right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise all right welcome everyone john corcoran here and we are live i am the host of the smart business revolution podcast this is a live episode with dr jeremy wise dr wise welcome thanks for having me this will be on inspiredinsider.com as well as well as smart business revolution yeah and we're excited to be here today you know every week we get to talk to interesting ceos founders entrepreneurs um virtually you know, not anyone. I mean, if I call up Oprah, she probably is going to be busy. I think that probably would be a hard one to get. But it's amazing the people you get to talk to. And it's it's such a thrill um, to be able to reconnect with old connections, highlight your clients, and meet new people. And so I'm such an evangelist for this medium of doing podcasts. I tell people, I've been telling people for the 11 years that I've been doing a podcast that everyone should start a podcast because even if you're not the next Mark Maron, you're not the next Joe Rogan, you're not a huge name in podcasting, it still will deliver tremendous value to your life. Um, and so we are also the co-founders of Rise25, where for a number, many years now, we have helped B2B business owners to connect to their ideal prospects, referral partners, and strategic partners. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25 Media, where we help we specialize in helping B2B businesses with a high client lifetime value. So if you want to learn more about that, you can email us at support at Rise25 Media or check us out at Rise25Media.com. All right. So, Jeremy, in this episode, we're going to be talking about the top tools and software that you can use for creating phenomenal podcasts and content marketing. And I want to mention something real quick based on what you said. I mean, I think lately you've had, um, based on connecting with amazing people and using it for, you know, you actually use it for professional development to learn from really highly respected, experienced people. I think you had the the first CEO and co-founder of Netflix on That's right. recently. Yep. Um, what about the comedy? <laughs> I am interviewing today the uh, founder oh, of Comedy okay. Central which yeah. should be a lot of fun. I'm a big fan of comedy. Uh, my dad used to do stand-up comedy. Um, so I'm a big fan of um, The Daily Show and uh, Chappelle Show and so many different mm -hmm. shows that have been on Comedy Central. So that's that's. I fun. didn't realize that was today. Okay, nice. Yeah, so that'll be later today. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I recently interviewed a guy who's a professor at my alma mater. So that, that's a good example. Jeremy, you did a great series for University of Wisconsin profiling different entrepreneurs. And you interviewed, you know, the CEO of Mattel, CEO of Land's End, a number of other um, household named people where your your alumni office, I'm sure, was thrilled that you were doing this and excited to introduce you to some of the most yeah prestigious uh, alumni. And so I finally decided to do the same thing. I went to UC Santa Barbara and, um, and they the, actually your mascot is the gaucho. Okay. Which is uh Spanish for pants, cowboy pants. That's a really fierce mascot. It's fierce. It is. That's true. They don't have a big athletic program there. Gaucho. <laughs> and, um, um, so we, uh, I, I decided to do this and I reached out to the alumni, spoke to a couple of people in the alumni department and they introduced me to some people. I recently interviewed a professor uh, who's also a venture capitalist, also a seasoned entrepreneur uh, who'd started a bunch of companies and was involved in, um, he was involved in GoToMeeting, which is a precursor to Zoom, which everyone's on these days, one of the early video conferencing companies. And now he's a venture capitalist. Then he introduced me to another individual um, who had a great conversation with who founded you know, one company that's a, at a billion dollar valuation. He is on the board and investor and a couple other companies that are multi-billion dollar unicorns um, and just had a great conversation with him. Uh, turns out his son listened to my podcast. So that was great uh, street cred right there. Nice. Um, but you're right. It, it is personal development, it's professional development, um, it's connections. But let, this topic, we want to talk about tools and software recommendations. But before we get to that, one of our most important missions is to say to people, it's really not just about the tools, right? You know, people come to us all the time. We see people start podcasts all the time. They spend 
12 hours, 20 hours researching the microphone that they're going to buy. They spend no time thinking about the people that they're going to feature and how doing a podcast is going to really dra dramatically change the, the network of people that they're connected to and actually putting some thought into that in advance. So I think our, our most important message is that that is incredibly important. And you need to think about that piece. Having said that, in this episode, we're going to talk about- I mean, about this is a popular question. That's why we're addressing it. it even though, even though it's maybe seventh on our list of important things to address, um, <laughs> yes. like a distant seven, right? Uh, it's still something that holds people up. And we want to see people that aren't held up. And one of the things that holds people up is naming their show and the tools and the software and the stuff it takes to get it going but like like you said john it's really about mapping out who you want to feature and the topics you want to talk about which if you have questions you can go to rise25.com we actually help people map this stuff out so you can launch and run your podcast the right way right or yeah. the the funny thing is a lot of times people i i've talked to so many people that you know three years ago they spent three hundred dollars buying you know, mm. a microphone and all this other different equipment. And it's been sitting on the corner of their desk for yeah. the last three years. There was someone I talked to a couple of weeks ago and they were asking for advice. And they said, I bought, there was three years ago, they bought like $2,000 worth of equipment yeah. and never used it. And never started. Yeah. It's sad to so, see that. I mean, I talked to a guy, this was like a year ago, who had spent $100,000 building out building out a huge video studio, Jeez. buying top of the line, all you know, all this kind of stuff. But then he'd been doing it for six months and hadn't gotten any good results from it. Hmm. You know, nothing to show for it, except for, you know, some really yeah. pretty videos. The strategy has to be in place. It has it's to be key. in place. So having said that, let's talk about, let's start with microphones. So I'm listen, talking, let's, let's, let's just say like, we're not technical wizards, right? So <laughs> the advice that you're going to get from us, we're about simplicity and simplicity that produces a good product, but it's not going to be, we're not going to, we don't geek out on technical related things. So let's yeah. the caveat. If you, there's probably people, there's lots of people that are way more experienced in this then we are, we just find something that works really, that works well, that's fairly affordable and go with it. And, okay? and so the, funny, the, the funny thing is I will say to people with pride, if you paid me, me, meaning me individually to launch your podcast, I couldn't do it from start to finish. I couldn't do it. I don't know all the different steps that are involved. We have an amazing team that does an incredible job of setting all those pieces up. But the reason that I'm proud of that is because what I'm really good at and what you're especially good at, what our superpowers is, is making sure the podcast is profitable, making sure that you use it to develop tremendous relationships, to connect with people that you admire, to have great conversations, to continue that conversation beyond the interview. How do you take it further? How do you go further? How, how do you turn that into a referral relationship or strategic partnership of some sort? That's really where a lot of people drop the ball and so that's really what we focus our energy and intention on and making sure that that's right. Now, as far as the microphone is concerned, I'm speaking out of an Audio-Technica ATR2100. The funny thing about it is 11 years ago, I purchased this microphone, not this exact one, but the same exact model 11 years ago. It lasted me about nine years. I made a decision at the beginning. I purchased it, boom, done. Didn't think about it for nine years. And then it crapped out. It stopped working. And so I bought the exact same one again. I didn't even upgrade. I didn't even spend more and get a nicer one, which you have a nicer one, because I, mean, I just it's figured- It's not that much nicer. And, and by the way, if you're listening and you have a suggestion of a mic you like, feel free to put it in the comments if you're listening to this live. Uh, but but yeah, ATR2100, um, and I think they have a newer version. This was probably the one you got. This is a Blue Yeti. I mean, yours is probably $70. This one is $120. And it's a USB mic. I mean, literally, you could get a USB mic, plug into the back of your computer and use it. OK, yeah. People have fancy soundboards. They probably that are plugging in and out of maybe nicer, fancier mics. But we, you know, you can get a nice sounding mic for 70 to 150 dollars. And this is the Blue Yeti. I have yours, John, actually over there because when I travel, I don't like <laughs> detaching all this stuff. So I bought 
another one, which is yours, that I my, just I bring with me. My main microphone is his backup. Well, <laughs> I mean, because like you said, I could be in the middle of interviewing someone and this could, I mean, this is, I don't even know, this is maybe 10 years old. I yeah. mean, this is really, I mean, you can get the newer version, which is pretty much the same thing. But right. and, so and, that is part of the equipment we recommend. If you have other suggestions, put them, they, you know, put them in the comments or whatever it is. And I want to point out, we have a whole cheat sheet of the different equipment and tools and other things. So if you are, if you want to check, go to rise25.com slash cheat sheet, um, you can, we share more recommendations of how to get clients, referrals, strategic partners, and about the tools and equipment, and everything there too. Um, right. So the mic, I don't know if there's any other combination. The other thing I want to say is the uh, podcast arm is very helpful. Typically the mic just comes on a stand. So getting some kind of boom arm is helpful. This one is like a road podcaster boom arm. It's $99. I have another one that I get when I travel. I bring when I travel, it was like $20. It works fine. You screw yeah. it onto the desk. So it's actually a great point because this actually gets a lot of comments having this uh, boom arm here. And I say to people all the time because they look at it and they're like, oh, you have an amazing microphone. And I'm like, the microphone's not that amazing. What's amazing is just this arm thing here. And it's just kind it's of a not even amazing. It it's just not looks- even the, actually, the, the, yeah, this is not that expensive an arm, but it, it's just helpful in getting it out of the way. The other point I'll make is people, I see people all the time that have purchased like a $300 microphone and then they record like this. They're like standing over here. And so the audio quality is poor because they're right. not putting the microphone right in front of their mouth. So what I say to people, just make sure that you get to put it right in front of your mouth. And if you use the, the cheap little three inch um, stand that came with the microphone, a lot of times it's going to be way below your, where your, your right. mouth is. Yeah, and there's a certain settings if you're using the Yeti, which I learned because someone's like, your sound doesn't, you weren't using it correctly. for, And so they coached me on actually using it way back when, 10 years ago. So there's certain settings you want to have this on that it works properly. So what other software recommendations? So that's a hardware uh, microphone. So what microphone, yeah. I mean, that's that's a mic conversation. Any USB mic that's decent is good. You know, um, the other one, we get asked about is um, what do you use to record? You know, um, actually, if you are doing live streaming, that's a different answer than if you are not live streaming, but you can use something like StreamYard to live stream. Um, And this will be a podcast episode as well. We use Zoom. I mean, most people are on Zoom. Back when I used Skype with Ecamm Call Recorder, um, but Zoom is just so easy and everyone's used to being on it. We just use Zoom. There's a lot yeah. of different ways to record. I mean, any way that, that you find is easy for you that you're normally using, use. There's no, we don't have a uh, necessarily a preference. We just want to make it easy for the other person and for yourself to have any barriers in recording. Yeah. And yeah. And, and that's, that's a great point. It, it, it again goes down to it, it's funny because I'll talk to people that have got, a massive business. They have a hundred people working for them, 200 people working for them, or they're doing 10 million, 20 million a year. And they want to know what software should I use to record? And I'll also honestly say to them respectfully, this is not something that you should be focusing on. This is really, you know, spending your time thinking about those things are, are, is not the best use of your time. What's a lot better use of your time is focusing your energy and attention not on that piece. But having said that, it is important and it, it is simple just to use something like a Zoom, which everyone's familiar with. Um, you don't have to use any kind of fancy recording software uh, beyond that. Uh, Jeremy, what about um, any other software recommendations that people yeah, I mean, use? I mean, as far as software goes, um, people ask, well, how do I, where do I put it? Like as an audio host? So... Mm-hmm. Is an audio. I mean, the, again, like the caveat is also this stuff changes, software changes, Zoom, you know, whatever, five years, 10 years from now, people may be using something else. So just follow whatever's easier. Um, the, the, where do you put it? How do you get it up on all these channels? Well, you need an audio host, just like a website needs a web host. You need an audio host. We've been using Libsyn for over a decade. You know, we like Libsyn. There's, there's lots of audio hosts out there, right? Yep. But, so again, we just look for something that is been in the industry for a long time and is stable and dependable. And all of them are, I mean, they're, 
the range of pricing is going to be from like $5 to $60, no matter what audio host you go with. And we just like Libsyn. They've been around for a long, long time. You know, right. some people ask us, you know, should I use Anchor? It's free. And John, you have an opinion on Anchor um, yes. and, and free. You know, there's nothing that nothing is free. I want to pay for my services to know that I own the account and it's not going anywhere. I know Anchor was purchased by did, they, did Spotify by them. I can't I think remember it was Spotify. Now. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. You know, so they have major backing, which is fine. But they also, I forgot if you saw the social dilemma. But if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. Yep. So if you are on Facebook, you're not paying. Well, guess what? You are the product. And same thing with Anchor. If you're not paying for it, you are the product. So they can use right. your means and, and channels. And we've seen this story before. We've seen it play out. It happened with um, the, I forget the name of it, but it was owned by Twitter, the the platform, short short video snippets. They were like six second video snippets. And I remember reading an article about a guy who had 2.7 million followers on this platform and Twitter, and it was a free platform. And Twitter just decided one day to shut it down. No notice, nothing. And these people completely lost these livelihoods, these massive Was it like Vine people. or something? Was Vine, it, thank you. Vine. Yes, yeah. Yes. And so um, Anchor could be the same thing. They could just decide one day, you know what? This didn't work out. Free podcast hosting turns out. <laughs> Who knew? It didn't work. And so they just shut it down. Yeah. And you lose your feed. You lose your subscribers. Everything you put into it. Because you didn't spend anything for it, you yeah. lose all. That. I mean, so Libsyn's like I'm, fifteen dollars a month or something. Yeah, ten. I think there's a, the initial 15. plan yeah. is five dollars. Yeah, so. exactly. It's, it's absolutely manageable. Yeah. All right. So people say that uh, people also ask about now. People ask me all the time about different software that comes along, and you know, podcasting has exploded in popularity, and so there's a lot more people asking about these different tools that have come around. And generally, what I'll say to people is, yeah, there's some good tools that are out there for creating all kinds of additional, additional assets out there. But again, you know, since we're usually talking to a B2B business that's profitable to begin with, that's using a podcast for business development and for uh, content marketing purposes, again, usually I say to people, not something you should focus on. Something that you should, you should be focusing on is, is how you can use the podcast. Yeah. And I also will say this, and I said this to people even before we had a vested interest and we were helping people with starting podcasts, is that you should create pressure for yourself by having someone outside, not within your team. You should focus on the, on what you do best and you should have an outside company or team that is worrying about these things. Cause these tools change all the time and you don't want to have to, you know, go down a rabbit hole spending an hour trying to figure out some tool that isn't working when you can just send an email and have them handle it. And a much better use of that hour is you interviewing two people who may be great champions of yours. That's a much better use of your time. Yeah. So for most companies, it makes a lot more sense for you not to worry yeah. about these various different tools. That's a good point, John. And like when we're speaking, we're speaking to that B2B business owner. Um, if someone is trying to create the next serial or whatever the next series, they'll probably you know, geek out on the, the technical part and making sure the sound quality is like NPR style. They're in a different type of business, right? Their right. business is in the business of the podcast or the content. Um, right. Because I remember when one of our clients said, you know, I'm thinking of, I heard the audio quality is like three times better than Zoom or something. And they went and they used that platform. I won't name the platform. And the person on the other end couldn't get it working. Then the, the recording didn't show up. I'm like, just they listen. lost recordings. Yeah, just yep. don't worry. Like it wasn't a necessity for them, and so it wasn't um, worthwhile. Yeah. Um, one last tool I want to mention, which is you might laugh, but this is really important, is Calendly or some kind of online yeah. scheduling tool. There's and Acuity scheduling or Calendly. Yeah. The reason why this is so important is it's amazing, but this one piece of streamlining the front end process of, of scheduling people to be guests with you on your podcast without it having really being time consuming, it can become really time consuming and it can sink the ship from the beginning because, you know, I do two episodes a week. Jeremy does two episodes a week. We publish over a hundred a year. I don't recommend that forever. And for most people, I recommend a weekly podcast, but that's still 50, 45 to 50 people a year. And just the process of scheduling that 
can be really difficult, can be draining of people's energy. So using a tool like Calendly to, to um, automate that process and, and to streamline it is very powerful. So you want to make sure that you put some time in just to get that set up properly from, from the beginning. And that's not all. There's other pieces that we recommend for it, but I, we do recommend using a tool like Calendly. Yeah, I wanted to say on that, you want to make sure you have the best customer interviewee experience you can. And when you use a tool like that, first of all, it eliminates the back and forth. So it's nice. They get to choose the time as convenient. It's nice. It also follow up, follows up with the most frequently asked questions because you can set a follow up with here's what most people ask me. And it just helps with the follow up of so the person's prepared because they may have questions. What's the show like? What what should the setup be like? And so you could have that follow up in an automated fashion to best create the best experience for that guest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin Folger says, unfortunately, this has happened to us last week. I wonder week. what Great. that he's talking about. I think he might have been talking about um, not having uh, or, or a misfire on the scheduling piece. Uh, I think that might have been what he'd been talking oh. about. So. Yeah, I mean, we see it happen all the time with where it's people... It's been game-changing, game-changing yeah. yeah. for me to set up. And, and some people resist this, John. I mean, maybe we talk about the resistance point, which is like, well, I want to control my schedule and I want to... I mean, listen, I've gone through all that as well. Like, well, I want to kind of look at it to see where I should put people. In the end, just send them to send them to the, the calendar link to schedule. Absolutely, right. You know? It's going to it's going to uh, make things so much faster. So I don't know um, if there's any, any other any software. software. I'm trying to think of as any other questions we get, we get how to recording, we get mics, we get the audio host, we get scheduling wise, streamlining the process, which is the scheduling link. Is yeah. there any other software or well, the, tools the, that people ask us about? Well, one thing that's become really popular is, um, creating micro content out of your podcast, which we do. If you look, if you follow us on LinkedIn, you'll see us sharing that we create interactive dynamic audios and we create graphic images and you know, there's no silver bullet, perfect software out there. It requires a human to look at these episodes, look at what's the best snippet that's going to uh, position, you know, uh, both the host and the guest appropriately. Sometimes you need to cut it down shorter so there's a bunch of different pieces. That's a good and, point. And there's no AI that's going to like perfectly do those things these days. Um, but that is uh, creating micro content. And there's a, a host of different tools and there will be more tools um, is a great way to take your, your content and have it go further. Yeah, that's a good point, John. It's like our process for doing that is the writer identifies what the best snippet is. Then they basically hand it to the editor because you know it's transcribed and then the audio or video person will will cut it at that certain point then the you know the editor will go back through to make sure the transcription is correct and then there's someone posting it uh on the different channels and making sure the people are tagged and the right comments are there so there's a lot that goes into that little 60 second snippet Right. Yeah. It's, it's a multi-step process. So you, you also want to make sure that you have that streamlined because it, um, it, again, it shouldn't be something that you're doing. It should be something that is handled for you because the highest, best use of your time is spent having great conversations with great people. There's a um, one other piece I forgot on the technical end because we're so not the expert when it comes to some of this technical <laughs> stuff is I and garlic, actually the lighting, Okay, so mm -hmm. the lighting, if you're doing video, um, I and Garlic, I made him get on. There was some episode, uh, Facebook Live, that I made him just get on and explain it. So we'll have to find it and like link it up so people can watch it. But I just got, I think, like a hundred dollars set on Amazon of these big lights. And my lighting is not even that great in this place because, you know, he advised I put something right in front of me, which I don't, but um, because I just don't have the, the room. But a good lighting that where you have, you know, lighting in front of you uh, is, you know, will make it look much better as well. Yeah. So with that, uh, Jeremy, where can people go to learn more about Inspired Insider and Rise 25? Yeah. Go to inspiredinsider.com to check out more episodes of the podcast. I've had anywhere from the founder of Kettle Chips to Atari to P90X to Big League Chew. And I know, John, you can go to Smart Business Revolution where he's had an amazing founder. I mean, he has some amazing this week alone, um, Netflix and 
uh what was the one that was was later today comedy yeah. uh comedy central comedy, comedy central. central yeah uh and you can go to rise25.com and check out more if you're interested in learning more about podcasting and go to rise25.com slash cheat sheet to grab a list of these different tools and software recommendations and uh that's it for this week thanks everyone for being here and we'll talk again soon what i got you can't buy it resides between my eyes walk through the fire came out better on the other side See, life's like a beach if you find the sand right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand